Hello, this is Michelle Castillo with Spot On Digital Marketing, and today I would like to cover an issue that creates wrong information in the Google Analytics of website owners. To demonstrate the problem, I'm looking at the acquisition all traffic channels on one of my website's Google Analytics account. Here we can see uh, different uh, channels and the amount of traffic that they bring to the site. Uh, Let's dig into the referral traffic, which is supposedly the traffic that comes from other websites to our website uh, via normally a hyperlink. When I first saw that, I was very excited. I had in one single month 229 visits coming from so many different websites. But taking a closer look uh, showed me that actually there are no hyperlinks to my website on these websites. Uh, further investigation uh, made me aware of uh, the phenomenon that is called referrer spam. In fact, the owners of these websites somehow managed to trick Google Analytics and convince it that they drive traffic to your website, while in fact, nothing of that nature really happens. I'm not sure what they're doing yet. Some say that uh, this is their way to drive traffic to their websites. Uh, but the important uh, part is to be aware of this phenomena and also uh, do as much as possible to eliminate it. Today we will look at few ways to eliminate the problem. The first tool I would like to show you is the Google Analytics filters which allow you to filter out uh, traffic uh, for different reasons. We will use it uh, to filter out referrer spam. For that purpose, I'll click on the admin button. And here I can see uh, the three levels uh, that every website that you have in Google Analytics has. It's the account name. This is the name you gave it when you created the account. The property, which is typically the domain name. And then the view. Uh, when you first create a Google Analytics account, by default, there is a view which is called all website data and it includes absolutely everything. And I usually do not want to apply filters to this view. Just in case my filter was not well defined, um, then the all website data view keeps absolutely everything. Because when you apply a filter, Google Analytics does not even record the information that is being filtered out and so you may lose some important information. So I will create another view uh, by clicking create new view here. And um, I will just call it uh, my new view and uh, set up the reporting time zone and create the view. So I have now a new view, it's called my new view. And the first step is to go and look at the settings. Here there's one thing that I recommend doing always, uh, and this is to check the exclude all hits from known bots and spiders. Uh, this is relatively a new feature that Google Analytics added about a year ago that uh, tells Google Analytics to eliminate all the bad spammers that they are aware of in on the web. The next step is to create our first filter. So let's click on filters and add filter. We will create a new filter. Uh, let's give it a name. And we will use the custom filter option. Our filter will exclude specific websites uh, defined by campaign source. I'm going to paste here a pattern that defines all the known uh, websites that drive uh, spam traffic to our site and nowadays. Uh, you can find this string be under this video. Uh, you can just copy and paste it into your filter. And once this is done, we just click on save. 
and we are all set. We have a new filter. Uh, as I've said before, uh, the filter is going to uh, work only from now going forward. So you can come back in a week and check out how it Im uh, impacted what you see in Google Analytics. While the filter we have created fixes the Google Analytics report, it actually only masks the problem. The referrer spammer uh, are still going to hit your website and this can create other problems. So another solution is to stop them at the source. And there are different ways to do it. I don't wanna go into all of them, but if you're a WordPress website owner, there are quite a few plugins that will do just that. I have never used any of those plugins so far, and today I'm going to install one. I'm looking at uh, what WordPress uh, has to offer uh, in the plugin, the free plugin uh, separatory, and I have decided to use the bot block because it seems to be updated uh, very often. It has more than 1,000 active installs and it has pretty good reviews. After installing the plugin, uh, there is a new uh, screen here under settings, which is called uh, bot block options. And here I'm just gonna leave everything as um, the default and I'm just gonna check it in a few days and see how it is going. So this completes today's video. Hope you have learned something new and let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.